Good morning, everyone. I'm really happy to be here today and to present you my organization. Uh, first of all, my name is Francesca, and I am the policy officer for Farm Animals at Eurogroup for Animals. And when I think about myself, I feel to be a privileged person because uh, I made of my passion my job. So I have uh, a very strong passion for animal welfare, and I'm very proud to work for Eurogroup for Animals because we can make big changes for all the animals. When I tell people that uh, I work uh, on animal welfare in Brussels, normally they look at me and they seem thinking like, oh, poor you. And in fact, I have to say that it's not easy, that it's challenging, but I strongly believe that we have to be in Brussels, that we have to be in Strasbourg, and that we have to work together. Doesn't matter if we are vegan, vegetarian, animal right, animal person, we have to be together. And this is what Eurogroup does. It brings people together. So, uh, I will try to present to you my organization, so who we are, what we do, what we have achieved, what we have to face, and why it's so important to stay together in Europe. So, Eurogroup for Animal is the only truly pan-European animal advocacy confederation. We count 49 members from 26 member states, but also from the US, Serbia, Norway, and Switzerland. And our primary goal is to magnify the voice of our members and of the citizens that support uh, this organization. And what we want to do is to broadcast their views, their voice to the institution and to the decision, maker, decision makers. This is our organizational chart. So we have the AGM, that is the main uh, decision body, but it delegates on behalf of its member the power to the board. And then we have the secretariat, which is made of 12 uh, uh, policy officers plus the director. And we have a project group, working group, and member groups. Basically, we have one working group for each policy area. So the working groups are composed of uh, representatives of our member that uh, are uh, relevant on the specific issues of farming, research animal, wildlife, cat and dogs, and equines. And we have a policy officer that runs the secretariat for the working group. Then we have the project group that are basically the same of the working group, but are time limited and are made for specific topics, so trade, piglet castration, and transport. And then we have member groups that are driven by our member, and in this case, the, the policy officer just help the interaction, so coordinate the interaction among the member. Yeah, Eurogroup for Animals focus uh, its work on the three core tasks. So we represent civil society, uh, and this is the reason why we have seats in uh, uh, the most important platform uh, uh, group uh, uh, stakeholder meeting in Brussels. Uh, Eurogroup is also campaigning on specific topic for, for bringing the attention of the institution, but also the member state on specific issue. And we also try to um, exchange best practices and knowledge among our members. We also run the secretariat for the intergroup, uh, the intergroup on the welfare and conservation of animals. So it's one of the first established intergroup in the European Parliament, and it's open to all the MEPs that want to uh, promote the policy related with the welfare of animals. Uh, what we do with the intergroup, we provide uh, basic background information on animal-related issues that have to be discussed at institutional level. But we have to say that in the past year, um, in, in the intergroup has also um, uh, it has also been like a catalyst for action, so has been the forefront of new initiatives, such as the ban of cloning of animals for the uh, food supply chain. Eurogroup for Animal has been uh, um, formed in 1980, and we have reached a lot of uh, goals in this year. We have had the ban of the use of battery cage in 1999, we have had animal welfare in freight trade agreement with Chile in uh, 2013. Uh, we had uh, the introduction of animal transport rule in 2005. But one very important step has been the recognition of animals as a sentient being. And this is what is stated in Article 13 of the Lisbon Treaty. 
that say that the Union and the Member State shall, since animals are sentient beings, pay full regard to the welfare requirement of animals. Unfortunately, it's not so easy. So we have a big gap between what is stated in the Article 13 and what is happening in the reality, where animals are still meat commodities. So what Eurogroup does is to work inside this gap. And we work inside this gap because we strongly believe that we need better legislation, we need better enforcement, and we need to build up a Europe that cares of animals. The EU has a lot of competencies that are related with the welfare of animals, because welfare of animals is not an isolated topic. So we have link with animal health, human health, consumer protection, internal market, environment, environment. And Eurogroup is trying to work with all these competencies of the European Union for achieving its goal. Recently, we have had uh, good news, so important signal, positive signal, has the Ministerial Alliance. So in 2014, uh, the Ministry of Denmark, the Netherlands and Germany signed the uh, vote declaration asking the Commission to promote, ensure and to set the condition for having a better protection of the welfare of animals. In 2015, Sweden joined with the Copenhagen Declaration, the Ministerial Alliance, and we are asking, they are asking for a restriction on journey time of transport, on phasing out of not therapeutic, therapeutic mutilation, EU legislation for all farm and companion animals, better information com for consumer, and for setting animal welfare condition in the trade agreement for the import of animal products. Also, the civil society is changing, and the uh, latest Eurobarometer on animal welfare 2016 showed that 94% of the EU citizens feel that the protection of animals, of farm animals, is really important. And the 82% thinks that farm animals should be better protected. In the, last year, in the, the previous Eurobarometer, that was 2007, the percentage was lower, so what, 77%. This means that there is a growing interest by the European citizen for the farm anim for the animals and for the welfare of animals. But we have, a, again, to be realistic, this is positive, but what is true is that we see every day key challenges for Europe and member states for implementing a better protection of the welfare of animals in the present political term. These are the worrying trends that we have to face uh, every day. So we see an inadequate implementation and enforcement of uh, the law and the directive. We see the legislation that are not updated despite the new scientific insight. And we see a focus on competitiveness in a globalizing market. These challenges correspond to our Act 4. We have Act for Farm Animals, so we want to, um, to phase out uh, all the mutilation. We want to put the protection for all species. We want to limit life uh, transport. We want to have a farming system that is cage-free, and we want to improve slaughter practices. We act for wildlife, so we want to see the welfare of the invasive species respected. We want to ban all the form farming, and we want to see the number of exotic pets decrease. We act for pets, so we want to see responsible, responsible ownership. We want to see traceability. We act for equine, so even here we want to see and promote a responsible ownership, but we want also to improve the transport and the slaughter practices for horses. And we act for lab animals, because we want to see a science that don't use animals anymore. We also work with the flagship campaign. So last year we focused on pets and we had this uh, uh, Protect Our Pets campaign that was really successful and we had 99% of the MEPs voting in favor of a compulsory legislation, registration on dog and cats in Europe. Next year we will focus on uh, stop um, painful pig castration because nowadays there is really a lack of implementation of the pig directive and we feel that we need to address this issue. 
And here we are with the, our campaign, so the Stop the Truck is still ongoing, but uh, um, I have to say that we have been successful in putting back on the European agenda the issue of transport. So during the uh, Agri Council uh, Committee of May uh, this year, uh, the Commissioner Andrew Kaitis uh, refers to the transport of live animals as a sensitive issue that must be addressed at European level. And also, um, we have uh, uh, six member states that have now signed the official request to the Commission uh, for a, a revision of the transport regulation. Here is what we, we call the Commission for. So we want to revise the transport regulation in line with the new scientific evidence. We want to uh, fattening and slaughter the animals as close as possible to the place of birth. We want to see a transport of meat so, or ca of carcasses instead of live animal. And we want to have a limitation of maximum eight hours for live animals and four hours for poultry. Here there is the website. If you haven't seen the, uh, the campaign, please go. It's really nice. You have an amazing video. Uh, and you can also sign our petition. There is a take action. So you have just to select your country and then you can send the letter to your minister. But how can we be successful? How can we make changes? And I found the answer by looking at the, the uh, five stage of uh, a social movement elaborated by Kim Stalwood. So you see you have five stage, stages. So you have public education, when people are made aware of what is going on. You have a public policy, so when the main entities that are playing a role in the society um, adopt a sympathetic position with the issue. We had a new legislation, so stage number three. You have the enforcement of the legislation, stage number four, and you have the public support in stage number five. Now, each movement, if want to be successful, has to pass through all this stage. But we have to be careful, and we don't have to assume that if we tick the box of stage one, we will be able to tick the other box in an automatic way. Kim Stahl would say we would never assume that if we are able to change the lifestyle of people, we would be able to make changes at institutional level. This means that for each stage, you need to have specific action, you need to have specific skill, you need to have specific competencies. This means that an organization can be absolutely successful in raising awareness, but not in making changes at legislation level. So what we have to do is to stay together. And this is what Eurogroup does. So it brings the network of people together to at European level for improving the situation of million, billion, unfortunately, of animals. And I like to conclude my presentation with this sentence. Coming together is a beginning. Keeping together is a progress. But working together is a success. Thank you. <laughs>